Rock Road, but the applicant's going to request for a deferral on that one. So we will skip over that to item two, which is 22-0133 Hampshire Pike Mixed Use Multifamily Site uh, Development Plan. Uh, I believe the applicant is here and want to kind of come up and go over your item for us. Good afternoon. Um, we have a presentation that staff put on the uh, server for us. It has some of our updated graphics that I was going to share with everybody. Uh, we're back before you tonight to talk about two items uh, that we uh, deferred based on at our previous uh, planning commission work session. One was uh, expanding our uh, color elevation and elevation types on this multifamily project. And secondly, it was to resolve a few traffic related uh, timing issues. Uh, so with that, I'll just wait until they're ready to show that. You are Kevin. I, I see one actually attached onto the agenda there. I have a thumb drive here as well, if that would be helpful. Where is uh, it's under uh, documents. The executive. Right, uh, right there. Um, presentation. Oh, the presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see it. And you have a printout of it yourself there too. Yeah. So I think until he can, if he doesn't get it up on the screen, we've got it. It looks like it starts with your Hampshire Pike mixed use, um, you know, um, cover, this, there. cover letter. This cover page. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Great. We've got that pulled up. So individually. the second page in the document is just an overview of, of the site plan and where we're at today. Um, I just wanted to kind of bring back some of the project statistics to familiarize. The planning commission um, it's a 24 acre site 360 units we have 15 multifamily buildings on site uh, we have a 10,000 square foot clubhouse uh, all the buildings are three-story and 24 units um, our required parking uh, is 495 spaces for the development we're providing 535 parking spaces um, 459 of those are surface and 76 of those are garage spaces and those garages meet the uh, requirements of the ordinance for um, individual garage spaces. Uh, the next page uh, just shows the two building types uh, and the floor plans that we're providing. One building uh, on the top is our building that has a mix of one, two, and three bedroom units. Looks like we can catch up here. Um, <clears throat> and the building uh, below is just a mix of one and two bedroom units. And so they're they're not quite equal, but um, we use that bedroom mix to determine the parking count based on the ordinance. <clears throat> uh, Just a quick question on that. Is a, that says first floor, but is that going to be each floor is going to be identical yep. to that? Gotcha. All three floors are identical. And then the next page, um, we, we, we totally revamped our architectural elevations. Uh, before, I think the main comment was you're going to have 15 of the exact same buildings spread throughout the site. And so, and it was a more kind of muted gray, kind of series of grays, uh, not, not a real colorful palette. So um, we went back to our architect and said, let's vary up some of the materials, definitely provide three different color palettes. So what you're seeing on the elevation page are the three different uh, material and color palettes that we're going to use. Uh, evenly throughout the site. We've got a warm color blend on the top. We've got kind of a farmhouse and red brick blend in the middle, and then a kind of a more of a stone and, and blue gray blend in the on the bottom. So I think as we mix those down our interior road and throughout the site, we'll have a nice uh, variation. I mean, there's there are other variations on the buildings. You know, the difference of some. Uh, and where the masonry stops and starts on the bottom floors and, and going up to the second floors, we have some difference in the columns. We'll do like a double column at the base or a, a brick stone base on some of the columns. We have a mix of horizontal um, flatboard siding and vertical board and batten siding. And we've really kind of changed around the places where those are located and, and how the colors are applied to those materials. So that's the update to the architecture. And we've been working closely uh, with Glenn as well on the traffic uh, 
issues. Um, I think generally the questions that came up at the last meeting were related to timing. We have off-sites included with this project. One is the signal at Hampshire Pike, and then we have about four different uh, off-site improvements. Uh, for instance, we have a turn lane on Old Williamsport Pike into the site. We have the, the addition of a turn lane onto Old Williamsport um, from James Campbell, and we have some improvements at James Campbell and Hampshire Pike. Um, Glenn's recommendation based on what we heard at the last Planning Commission meeting was to require that the signal get built uh, before the second phase of the multifamily begins. So what we've, we've got 15 buildings, and we'll likely build the first eight in one phase so that they can be start a lease up period in those while we're finishing the second phase, the second uh, seven buildings. So before we can pull any COs or certificate of occupancies on that, that would be the ninth building after the eight, we would have to have the signal complete. And that would include intersection improvements as well at that. So we have two turn lanes, opposing turn lanes on Hampshire Pike, and then the improvements uh, coming into our site on Hampshire Pike. And then all the other off sites would be required before, I think we decided the 12th building. So we, we're, uh, the traffic study that we submitted with the previous application said, we'll complete all those off sites by the end of the first uh, of all 360 units. And I think there was some concern that, well, maybe that'll delay them too long. So we're moving those dates forward. And I think those are the, the architecture and the traffic were the two items that we um, were discussing and why we deferred. And so we're back to you tonight with answers. <clears throat> so on the traffic real quick, just to make sure I understood what you're saying. So your first phase is going to be eight buildings and no traffic study required even when those are occupied until you start that ninth building or start second phase. Is that correct? Uh, traffic signal. The traffic signal. Traffic signal. signal. Yes, sir. Yeah, the study yeah. was required. Um, they will probably start constructing all the buildings at once. If I had to guess, I mean, is that how you see it? Or I mean, it, on a site like this, you're going to start on one end and kind of move through the rest. So I think you'll see, you know, likely it will begin on the south, which is on the screen left here, around the clubhouse. That'll be the leasing center and the amenity center, which we'll need when we rent the first units. Um, and it's just not feasible to open 15 buildings at once from a construction and just a leasing standpoint. So we'll take the first chunk and focus on those. And then, you know, three to six months later, we'll have the rest of the building finished. And it'll just be a continuous mm -hmm. uh, stream of construction. This might be a silly question, but when you, do you start leasing, like, you have to have all eight buildings of phase one completed, or can you lease them as you complete each building? Uh, you know, well, probably build the clubhouse first mm -hmm. and we'll have you know leasing offices established and so they'll do pre-leasing before the units are sure. ready so as soon as the first building opens it, you know they don't want to move people in when one building is open and have them dancing around construction so they'll focus on a chunk get those done and then have some pre-leased and then have ongoing leasing throughout the lease up of the project what point will you do the connection to old williamsport pike is that in the s second phase It'll be in the first phase. In the first phase as well. If I could, just on the traffic part, the only thing that I have a note on that wasn't said there, maybe I just missed it, but um, Glenn, if I'm correct, you are recommending that Woodland Crossing, the access to it, not be open until the final 12th building is completed and construction yeah. is ended. Until all the units are completed right. and construction mm -hmm. is done, so the fifteenth building, correct? Right. Okay. And that's after that is when we would open up the connection to Woodland Cross. Yeah, and that would be before any of the single family lots that are done. Yes. You know, I thought I recall we also talked about maybe making that contingent on when the commercial opens. If that was maybe a, a reason to open that road or to prolong opening that road, because that would be the use that would, you know invite off-site traffic through the site. I mean, we're, we're flexible. I'm not, you know. Right, so at a minimum, we're gonna hold it until yeah. all these are done. And then Good. along the way, if the commercial comes or uh, single family construction starts, we can address that for sure. Can you briefly just kind of go over the amenities you're gonna have? Yes, so um, 
we have a 10,000 square foot clubhouse. There's a large fitness component to that. There is a, an office and leasing and uh, property management component to that. Then we have a large club room and an indoor amenity space. So you'll have like a, a kitchen space, a living room space, you know, fireplaces, you know, indoor gaming, things like that. And then we have a large pool deck outside of the clubhouse that has a spa or hot tub. It has outdoor gaming, artificial gaming lawns for cornhole or bocce ball, that kind of thing. We have an outdoor fitness space, um, an outdoor fire pit and dining with grills as well. Uh, we have a dog park. We have a playground, and then we have other uh, seating areas with picnic tables and benches kind of scattered throughout the project. Is there any, is it, will it be gated, you know, like security codes or anything like that? For the, nope. Okay. Uh, I've come, Mr. Chairman. So uh, when this was resubmitted, it, it was a, a modification from the original request. Um, that was seen by the design review committee. Uh, so there's a few notes to potentially look at or trying to clean it up a little bit. So just as a note, the property lines on this is uh, are being adjusted on the north and south lines um, from the original request. I think some of the, maybe the landscape plan is still showing the old lines and it's a little bit confusing, but um, they, they are keeping the entire prop, the development within the property, but they are gonna have to adjust the property lines in order to do that. So expand it out just a little bit. Uh, the garage units, uh, in order to count those as spaces, you'll need to ensure that they're 15 foot wide on the inside space. Um, the way it was looking, it looked like maybe they were 14 foot wide on the inside space. Uh, if you could just take a look at that and verify that for us. Uh, your parking lot, so you uh, modified your parking lot some. Just, just make sure that it adheres to landscaping ordinance for such. Uh, I didn't see the landscaping in the original plan. Well, it looked to be correct, but then the new portions being added, it didn't carry over into those. Uh, the, just as a note, the retainer wall that you have on the local road that's being created through the middle, um, you're approaching the max height there. I think it's 7.9 right now. When you hit eight additional setbacks have to be had, which is gonna get into your unit. So just be mindful of that as you move into your site construction plan phase. Uh, on the plan set labels, the building types are labeled as A and B. Um, but also your renderings are shown as one and two. And then okay. there's also an additional third rendering that's not labeled on any of the A and Bs. Uh, so if we could clean that up just a little bit, just to be able to relate them a little bit better. I'm sure it's just as you've Understood. gone from modifications there. And then we discussed the transportation portion of it. And Paul, can those items be addressed with the final? site plan or the final construction sure just settle. just there and these are not major items just for the commission these are not uh, big items it's just a few items as we reviewed it from the previous middle that just need to be cleaned up understood thank you is old highway old williamsport pike is a county road it is a county road any comments from no it's, would... it's on us to coordinate with the county to get those improvements and those permits and do you know what kind of improvements from old, on Old Williamsport Pike you may have to make? I know you, you, know, you got to put the turning lane at James North James Campbell, but I wasn't sure if there's anything else on. Well, and, and that one shouldn't affect Old Williamsport, but the one the left turn in on on Old Williamsport to our internal road, we'll have to do some pavement widening for that. Just the left turn in right and there. the access. I have no other question. Anybody? Is it changing the color of the clubhouse? Uh, it it is a different color that is more consistent with this new palette. All I got. Um, <laughs> I'll get mad if I didn't talk. That's all I got. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Next item tonight is item three twenty two dash zero one three four from Core Spaces preliminary plan master plan rezoning request from. Kimley Horn for preliminary PUD master plan approval with rezoning from RS40 low density to CD2 or CD2, I'm sorry, to an RM1 PUD with 342 units located at 1647 Old Highway 99. You again. Y'all are going to be tired of me. I only <laughs> got one more after this. <clears throat> okay, so um, this is this project requires a lot of kind of prep and, and introduction. It's it's a pretty unique uh, type of development. I think it's a pretty 
uh, special kind of development. I wanted to um, make one introduction before I get started, though. We have the property owner here tonight who is local to his family's local. Allow him to make a brief. Thank you, Josh. <clears throat> Chairman Goats and members of the commission, my name is Kevin Hewlin. My family has owned this property at 1647 Old Highway 99 behind Stan's store and, and restaurant on the west side of I-65 since 1991, and we are the seller. Uh, my parents settled in Columbia in 1960, and most of our family is still here in Columbia today. My father was a small business owner for many years in the community, including Columbia Concrete and True Value, and he's also a very active member of the community. I want to thank you all for what you all do for the city of Columbia. I appreciate the time and energy that you all put into serving the public in this way. And I know you're looking out for what is best in our community. And I also know sometimes it can be a thankless position to be in, so thank you. With the help of Charles Hawkins, I think we have found a fantastic company that wants to bring their product to this location. We were selective in this process, but we've been thrilled to work with this company. They're impressive, they're innovative, and Core Spaces shares the vision of making this a gateway to the city in this area. They've shown experience and integrity in our dealings with them, and I wanted to share that with y'all. This project is unique, it is high quality, and it seems to fit into your vision of smart growth, and I think it'll be a great extension of the current TDOT project at Exit 46. I'm excited for Josh to show you the concept that doesn't just improve the property, but perfects it. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Um, also tonight, uh, Aaron Friedman with Core Spaces is here if there's any specific questions for the developer, um, but I'm going to make a presentation tonight. Um, Oxenfree is the brand. It's, it's the name for the uh, build to rent communities that Core Spaces builds across the Midwest and the Southeast. Um, I had to write down a few notes just to make sure I didn't miss a couple of the points. Um, there's, you know, build to rent single family and townhomes is different than a, a multifamily apartment. Um, what, what Core Spaces is doing at Oxenfree is they're providing a mix of single family and townhomes and a, and a walkable kind of new urbanist neighborhood environment. Um, it, it offers the convenience of the maintenance-free multifamily living that you find in an apartment complex um, with all the benefits of a single family lifestyle. So private yard spaces, attached garages to your units, uh, but it does not skimp, and you'll see this in the presentation tonight, on high-quality, amenity-rich environments. Um, you know, people who are moving up uh, or switching up, uh, there's two primary groups of people that gravitate towards these types of developments. The switch-ups are the empty nester active adults who are tired of mowing the yard and maintaining a house, and they want a lock-and-leave and, and maintenance-free lifestyle. Um, and an amenity rich lifestyle. And then there's the move ups, the younger couples, young professionals who are ready to get out of an apartment and get more space and they have more disposable income. You know, what I'm seeing across many markets right now is, you know, that that goal of buying your first house is being pushed out with young people these days. Young professionals are moving jobs more often. They want to travel more and they're not as fixated on buying their house and planting their roots. Um, we see these build to rent communities all across the country. Uh, Kimley Horn being a company that has offices from the east to the west coast, we've got uh, these types of developments um, uh, in, in a lot of different states. Um, these folks are renters by choice. Um, you know, another big need that these communities have uh, met for communities like Columbia are those transitional families who are having to put 10 offers down on a house before they can close on one so they can be in a nice single family environment with their young children in the right school district before they can close on a house and move in. So we've got kind of those three segments uh, that these communities serve very well. Um, just a brief overview of who Core Spaces is. Um, you can see on the map there they've got developments in Colorado, Texas, uh, North Carolina, Florida, and they're expanding. Um, they have 30 assets, 15,000 beds, 6,000 units. Um, you know, it, it, they have experience. I think I, I just wanted to put that up there to show that these folks um, know what they're doing and they do it really well. Um, and these community types are focused on single family and 
attached townhome product. And then the next slide really just starts to speak to the high level of design and amenities. Um, they're very intentional about architecture and materials and floor plans. Uh, when I get into the details about the, uh, the mix of elevations and, and floor plans, it, this is, we will not have a problem of monotony at this project. You'll have a streetscape that has a very rich uh, kind of canvas of different community types. And then on the right, the field house was uh, just some pictures of finished amenity projects that they've done. Um, fitness, co-working, daycare, indoor, outdoor activity spaces. So now for some quick context, um, this is a 48 acre site. It's located behind uh, the main commercial frontage <coughs> along Bear Creek Pike and the I-65 exit. Uh, so it's fairly nestled. It's not right in plain view. It's behind a lot of those commercial businesses. So it's tucked in uh, to a sloping hillside down to a creek or a drainage uh, through the middle of the site. Um, Quail Run is located to the north and we do provide a local street connection <coughs> through the project uh, that will give additional access options for that neighborhood through this project uh, as well. Um, as uh, Paul had mentioned, it's a rezone to a UDRM1. And I think I covered those points. So our project statistics, uh, 343 units. Um, so there's a mix of single family and townhomes. Uh, both have front load and alley load. Um, the front load single family are the kind of the more yellow single family items on the outsides. You see them on the west side and you see them on the east side. Um, the orange units more clustered in the middle are the single family alley load. And one of the reasons for the PUD is um, to allow for units to not front to a street and to allow units to front within these pods that have uh, amenity rich kind of walkable spaces. So when we get to some other graphics, you'll get a better explanation of that. Uh, we have townhomes, both alley and front load as well. The alley load are kind of side and fronting there at the entry in the dark brown, the, uh, the kind of reddish pink uh, townhomes, uh, front load on the sides and up at the top more so are the front loaded townhomes. Um, it's worth pointing out that every single unit has an attached garage that you can walk into your unit from. Uh, we heard from staff, we, we heard from you through staff, that it's important that these garages meet a certain size requirement and that these driveways meet a certain size requirement because folks uh, in Middle Tennessee have trucks and big vehicles and a lot of stuff. And so all of our garages are 22 feet deep. All the driveways are 25 feet deep. Um, but something to point out that's unique because this is a multifamily, it's, it's horizontal multifamily is kind of how I've explained it to other planning commissions and councils. Um, the only public roads in this project are Spine Road through the middle, which has a, a separated median, very aesthetically pleasing road from the entry up to the roundabout. And then to the west, we have a local street connection to future development. All the other pods outside of those right-of-ways is one single lot. And so these homes don't sit on their own individual lots. They're never intended to be subdivided or sold. This is a community that will be owned and maintained by a property development company. It will be continuously leased and released. And um, all of the exterior, the entire home, exterior, interior, the landscape and maintenance are all maintained by a property management company that are on site 24 seven. Their staff, some of their staff lives on site. And so there's never um, a shortage of you know, ways to meet the residents' needs. Um, as I mentioned, nearly every unit actually has a two-car attached garage. Some of the front-loaded townhomes, uh, the units in the middle, you have a sixplex building, the four units in the middle are single-car garages, so they would have a one-car garage and a one-car driveway. Um, now to the fun stuff. That was the statistics. What, what really makes this community special are the amenities. On this color graphic, um, the green are the park, the uh, program park spaces. We have a main community center and pool facility. We have a dog park and we have three other uh, highly amenitized pocket parks spread throughout the community. The blue spaces are, are the greenways, which are also amenitized. 
the orange spaces are the improved open space areas that have their own amenities and they're planted with native plants. And as I mentioned, um, heavily landscaped common areas and units maintained uh, by on-site development. So next slide, we can kind of go, I know you guys have other applications tonight, so I'll try to wrap this up. Uh, the clubhouse concept you can see here, we've got uh, sport courts, um, event lawns, playgrounds, uh, picnic areas, swimming pool. There's actually a big covered outdoor sport court as part of the clubhouse. Next line. You've got, uh, this is, I mean, as, as I mentioned about very intentional design, this is the clubhouse that they're proposing. Um, big open air covered spaces on bookending the, the, the space. Very, you know, attractive and contemporary design with some uh, nice materials kind of blending that farmhouse and contemporary design concept. Next slide. So these are the greenways for the units that don't front to a street or a driveway. Um, these are spaces that have fitness nodes, they have benches, they have enhanced landscaping. Um, you know, these spaces between units are between 40 and 60 feet. So it's, it's very generous space. I know on the plan it may look a little tight, but there are some pretty generous areas. We have small private yard spaces in the front yards of the alley loaded units and the backyards of the front loaded units. Next slide. Here's another greenway area where it's more focused on the yards and, and the path in the middle. I mean, folks can get out of their door, walk to the clubhouses, walk to the parks, walk to commercial. That's one thing I did not mention earlier. We have a one acre commercial site in the middle of the project that's part of the gateway overlay district. Um, next slide. This is the main boulevard coming into the project that'll have you know, one way on either side of the median boulevard. These are the alley homes that front. And this is a good slide to look at. And you can see how we can mix. We have three different architectural styles in the homes, each with their own series of color palettes. We can mix and match and really provide a diverse streetscape. And then I'm going to run through the pocket parks. We have our nature play pocket park with a lot of different, you know, embankment slides, seating areas, sort of climbing logs and nets. Next slide, we have uh, our fitness park that has a yoga lawn, uh, fitness equipment, and other seating areas. We have our north side pocket park, which is more kind of community garden and passive with a, a hammock lawn. Uh, we have the dog park that's just adjacent to the clubhouse that has, you know, amenity rich dog uh, toys in there. So we've got the climbers and the baths and just a nice kind of interactive space for the dog park. And then these are the greenway areas. And again, these are pocket parks in and of themselves. These are outdoor fire pits and seating areas, garden spaces. And then you can start to see how, as these units front in on these green spaces, how it's not just the sidewalks along the edges. We're meandering landscaping uh, walkways to really activate those spaces. That's another version that shows the fitness nodes. And then just to, to summarize, um, architecture is paramount with this. You know, we're not trying to deliver a bunch of cookie cutter houses uh, to this project. We're trying to create uh, a vibrant street scene and open space uh, that really stands the test of time and creates a, an, you know, aesthetically pleasing amenity rich environment for these residents. I mean, these are not cheap rents. I mean. You could buy a house for the same price that you're going to rent these homes for. So um, it's it's a different lifestyle. It's a it's a big step up from apartment living, but it's for those folks that um, are most interested in that more or less tied down lifestyle. So that's that's the overview. We're here tonight to throw a lot of information at you, but also um, answer questions. <clears throat> There'll probably be lots of questions I'm trying to think of which one to start with. Let's start with the alleyways, 16 foot alleyways. I know you mentioned that each one of the units has a garage and then a garage or a parking, a driveway that's parking. Uh, but the at least the ones that are on the alleyways, it, it appears they don't have much of a driveway, at least in this drawing right here. So are you saying they have a 25 foot driveway as well? No, only the front load homes uh, have the driveways. Okay. Um, the, the alleys have been designed per city standard, which is there's 30 feet between garage doors, and then there's a seven foot apron 
and a, a 16 foot pavement alley. Now we have the option of widening the pavement um, in areas where we need to for fire lanes. Um, but for the most part, we were using some of the city standards for how to address alleys. Now, one thing I uh, didn't point out was that um, the parking, we have, if you took the uh, requirement, two spaces per unit basically across this development, uh, we need 710 spaces. We're providing 1,081 parking spaces. Uh, it's it's mixed in there. 798 of those are in uh, the garage and driveways, but we have 238 guest parking spaces strategically placed throughout this whole site. We have parallel spaces along our interior driveways. We have clusters of head-in parking in denser areas. So very intentional about you know making sure we have ample parking. We are uh, we have 45 spaces uh, at our clubhouse. And as I mentioned before, that red, big red box in the middle there across the street from the clubhouse is a, a future commercial use. Um, it could be a small coffee shop. It, uh, core Spaces is actually uh, thought about using it as a kind of a gathering spot with, you know, outdoor volleyball courts that could be rented with, you know, a small little, um, you know, juice bar and that type of thing. So something that would complement development. We're not going to put a gas station there. We'll be real selective about what does go there. Um, but that's, I think we're, we're going to be intentional and make sure that what does go there is, is complimentary and kind of benefit to this Columbia at large, because we're going to have folks passing through this project as well as the residents. That commercial parcel would still just be falling under the umbrella of one parcel, just designated as a commercial zone. Uh, th that would be its own parcel. It would be its own. Yeah. Parcel. I mean, if you kind of, this is broken up into basically three large lots plus the commercial split by the, the main public road through the middle. We'd have one large lot on the right-hand side or the east side minus the commercial parcel. And then we'd have two lots on either side of that westbound local street step to the, to the west. All right, what we're voting, what we'll be voting on next Wednesday is the master plan, correct? Yes, sir. So, um, so what they'll have to come back is the preliminary plan, right? No, no, sir, not in this one. So, uh, just just to kind of start us off, uh, this is a rezoning request. Um, it was applied for under the, your previous ordinance, thirty six thirty eight. So that's the review standard that you're applying to this particular request. Uh, so this is a multi-family plan. Um, as, as Josh indicated, there are no property lines. Um, we're used to seeing vertical units. This one is just flattening everything out and, and detaching the unit. So think of it as an apartment complex, but with a mixture of product types and one story or two stories. So, oh, it, oh. so it, would, it would come back as a final master. Oh, so but all the pictures we saw, the general way this should look, this may look, mm -hmm. we don't have any of that yet. But this, what I shared today, are detailed plans mm -hmm. as to how it will look. Those so parts, that that? it's in the engineering plan. Okay. Set. Yes, I mean, sir. I, I looked in there, but what they were showing, it may. I just go by. It may look like this. It could look like no, this. this. No, is it's a concept. So y'all have details. Yes, sir. Most of the, the okay the, the snippets there were actually taken from the plan set. That okay. was turned I just want to make sure. And there's two. So when you look in your agenda, there's two different sections. There's one that's more of an engineering plan set. And then there's one that's an architectural plan set okay. that gets in more of the detail of the open space and the architectural styles. The engineering plan set gets into the grading and where the okay. roads are and the width. All right, so, let's, get, let's get nasty on this park. It, it will require that's uh, not preliminary plan for the roadway, for the public roadway. That's true. I think about so utilities and roadways would require a plat. Similar to the, the previous one. Okay. Uh, the, the platting. Right. Just for the roadway, not now, lots. I want to make sure on this plan that it, I saw you, need, you wanted a variance. Can you go over the variances that they're wanting? Sure. I, uh, so the variances are on the front page of the engineering plan set, but the, the meat of the variances are with regards to the uh, parking and the use of the garages, as well as fronting street. So almost the majority of these are facing either a driveway or a public space, um, like some of the amenities that was shown to you earlier. Um, and then the town home yard space, which is where you have to have 
100 square feet of yard space for each townhome. They've incorporated that space into the amenity space, not actually on each, each unit. But the, the big one is the fronting of streets and then using garages as the sole source of parking for that. Well, and as I mentioned, it, it's not the sole source of our parking. I mean, we have, uh, we were intentional about making sure that we had, you know, we're not giving everybody a single car garage, giving them the minimum. Um, what, but by looking, by looking at this, if you live on the inside units, you're walking. I mean, and you've got to pull, because you're not, you can't park in the alleyway, correct? So you're going to have to immediately right. pull into your drive garage. So you're going to have to have somebody in the golf cart riding around, make sure they pull in their garage. Well, if you have a guest come over in these middle units, there's one place they've only got two places to park. Um, I well, mean, I'm, I'm seeing, and as you know, I've got, I'm a fanatic on this parking because it comes back on you and it comes back on the city, this parking. And I, you're doing a lot of walking. Is that what y'all are wanting? I mean, 69, 70, 71, 94, 93, there's, I don't know where these people are going to park. Well, it, if you look at, I think, probably what you're focused on, and rightfully so, are those interior blocks of single-family homes that front those alleys. That whole block is surrounded by parallel parking. you got parallel parking on the uh, medium well, boulevard street. you got it at the bottom, two spots, and you don't have any at the top. Uh, well, there's parallel <laughs> parking allowed on your local street, and we have parallel parking on both sides as well. But um, everybody's going to be fighting for the parallel parking. But that's just for guests. Because oh, every because oh, wait a minute now because <laughs> 300, 300 units have two car garages, oversized no, two I'm car not garages. I'm talking about these right here. But if you got three people and they're grown adults, you're going to have three cars. You're going to be fighting for spot. I'm, I'm and I, I'm no. not saying this off track. This is a unique situation, but this parking is. It it is why we have a rich network of sidewalks, and they're great places to walk. I mean, we have, have sidewalks everywhere that connect the front doors to parking spaces, um, and you know we have big clusters of head in parking in areas where you know they're nearer to the townhomes. Yeah. Um, I mean, if if I did the math, I would say on either side of the boulevard where we've got the single family alley loaded homes, and you you count the spaces on the boulevard on the bottom on the left hand side, you're going to have you know. 30 or 40 parallel spaces wrapping around each of those blocks. And then if you start to look around, you'll see, oh, there's there's 15 parking spaces head in. There's another 15. And I mean, mm. I think we've, we've really gone above and beyond. And like I said, we've got 1,081 spaces. That's um, if, we, if we allow the variance. Well, correct. I mean, we're this is All a right, PUD. So we're we're sure requesting we the variance. That. I mean, I'm not yes. telling you, but if they didn't know it was the variance, the variance is if we allow the variance, then you've got 1,000. Well, the, the variance is to allow us to do more garage work because right now it says for multifamily right. we have to have max 30% counted towards right. required park. Not so good. for us to allow that, so every one car garage, you can count that as instead of every three, you only can only count one. Right. But that's why we really went you know, well above and beyond requirement. And how do these alleyways work with the fire department? So what we have are 24 foot wide drive aisles throughout the entire project. And we have a 24 foot wide drive aisle that runs right through the middle, kind of east to west. So we have all the hose pull dimensions set, you know, that 150 foot to those interiors. Uh, you know, well, so we, they just pull it to it. Right. I mean, it's not like we're thinking is they pull up to the front door. Right. So and it's really only for the, the units on those green courts because they've got a full uh, fire lane around yeah, the other ones that any of those driveways. And, you know, it, it'd be real easy for us to switch the plan and go to a 24 foot wide alley everywhere and give them a fire lane everywhere. So there's really only a couple of half dozen different segments that are just the traditional 16 foot alley. Yeah, so I apologize. That was a poor use of word of sole source, but I will say the disbursement of parking extra is hard to be able to see in the plan here and how it relates to each unit, especially for a development that's very car centric and where it's located and what its function going to be. Is that you would actually think there would be even more parking for this one? Um, the garages that are being listed here, some of them that we're talking about, they're only 11 foot wide um, 
on some of those. Let's see. Yeah, 11 foot 9 inches wide on some of those. So that's going to be a, probably a two-car family living in that one-car garage solution that I'm having a difficult time seeing where that second car is going to go. Well, the only time you have that 11 foot wide garage is on those uh, front loaded uh, single car garage townhomes. There's only 44 yes. of those and they all have a full 25 foot deep driveway in front of the garage. So there are two, you know, full size one car parking spaces, one in the garage and one on the driveway for those smallest units. Right. But you have 88 of those units that only are really supporting one car. You have a driveway that's a 10 foot wide by 25. So there's one car. But we actually have only have 44 of the one car units out of the whole development because the end caps are two cars with. Right. So you've got 44 one car garages. That's right. And then 44 one car driveways. That's correct. So you have 88 units? Uh, no, 44 units because they each have a garage and the driveway. <clears throat> but then you've got these alleyways that came up, you got to pull immediately into the garage, so they better not have any junk in that garage. Why well, break it out? So, I mean, it's, and I don't know, I guess y'all do it, but um, up there at the top, you have those units facing, am I looking at it right? Those units, the front of those are facing the detention pond? And, and a pocket park. Yes. Yeah, okay. Oh, the townhomes toward the north. Yeah. Well, okay. north. North east, east there. Yeah. They're facing the other team. And the fire truck can flow through this thing pretty good. I mean, yeah, we have I, the hammerheads and the turn radii. Um, so he can get to that right corner up there. They would come up. You can see that. So they can go through the alleys. I mean, do y'all design them? Because I saw some, I read somewhere where alleys aren't, y'all put it down where alleys aren't designed for fire trucks. Um, and it, again, it's, it's only where we don't need the fire lanes. So those, okay. it's just on the south portion where the middle orange units are. Those little north-south legs of the alley are the only 16-foot wide alleys because we've got 24 on both sides and through the middle. And like I said, we still have the same dimension between garages. So if the fire department decided they wanted to go there, the plan still works. We just go from 16 to 24 foot wide alleys and we have a shorter driveway apron, which is still meets the garage setback requirements of the ordinance as well, which is minimum of three feet. So you uh, this, this minimum three feet. Mm -hmm. Three and 24. Three and 15, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now this is a question. i got nothing to do with this plan. This is a theory question. And I'm just talking because this would be something I would ask Paul. And this is a study session. This is one big piece of property, right? Yes, sir. So they could, you could not, as of right now, you could not sell one unit. Correct. All right. Heaven forbid an 07 doesn't come up. No way. Well, I mean, well, I mean, I, there's 300 and something units. And when you were talking, you said they did not ever plan on doing it, but they could go back, survey each one of these units off and make it a horizontal regime. You'd have to approve it. Okay. I mean, that's what I was wondering. I mean, is that right? We would have to approve it? You, technically, you would need to approve it. Now, capturing, we don't look at real estate transactions. Right. So if somebody decides to throw out an HPR by description, we're not going to really see it because there's no plot to record with an HPR. So it would be something that would have to happen, and we get we catch it. But then what do you do after yeah. the fact? I, I was just wondering. That was the question I had. It's like, um, man, there's a lot of houses here. We have. A minimum of 12 feet between all the buildings just as a, as a side note i mean so there we have ample space would that work then under the zone row of set 14. well you're it's a master plan so you're setting up the distances through your master plan. and those are more for um, three-story four-story buildings these are all two-story right it, typically apartments you would see 25. but we don't have anything smaller than i mean a new ordinance doesn't allow anything less it doesn't have anything to do with this, but I'm just talking. We've always tried to say seven and a half. It would be 15 feet between them, haven't we? For, for a single family, yeah. Single family? You've gone between 10 and 15. Sorry. Uh, just the fives, I know you're not yeah, We don't like fives. Yeah. So I, if you, I was just, well, that was just a question for the future. I mean, I hope, I don't know if anybody else thought of that, but 
So a few other things uh, on, on the review of the resubmittal. So this is similar to the one prior to is that there are a couple of dead ends that are exceeding the max of 150 feet there on the south side of the property there. Also, we're looking at, this is a little bit different in the fact that we're using a driveway construction pipe essentially as a road. We don't really have a driveway construction cross-section um, to be used as a road. So there's alleys that then go into driveways and driveways that then flow into alleys. So that's one of the things that will have to be set up in this. And then also a variance, uh, you're looking at the offset alley section. So there's several alley sections that are slightly off. And maybe that's achievable to clean up, straighten those out to go across from each other. But um, this is kind of a first review of, of the resubmittal on it for us as, as, as it comes before you. Just a few more items that wasn't originally mentioned in the original request since it changed since that original request. Everything you've mentioned so far, Paul, I think could easily be worked out. I mean, if we have to pay the unit here or there to make sure we're addressing all the staff's uh, concerns, I mean, this is, um, we're, we're trying to do this right. Yeah, we're just trying to put out there. There are a few more things to special about the plan. Well, we yeah, it's do, different. You've got, a, you've got a private alley that's 24 wide, so you can't have on-street parking 24 wide. So how are you going to keep people from doing it? Well, we they have on-street parking that. shown. I mean, it, you know, and it, you need to kind of zoom in and see, but there is a lot of parallel on-street or on-driveway parking here where we have a 24-foot wide drive lane, but then we have an 8-foot wide parallel parking space right next to it. And we have... Not the ones that are facing the retention pond. I mean, where are those people going to park? Uh, on either side, there's clusters of head-end parking, mm -hmm. and each of those buildings all have. Um, and this is a good example of where, um, so on the right there, uh, next to those three brown buildings that face the park, there's eight or ten guest spaces head-in right next to the alley. Well, that's the um, that the other people are going to be fine. And there's parallel parking right in front of those orange buildings along the driveway, and then every unit along the north side has... You know, they got four spaces per unit because they got the two in the garage and they got two in the driveway. So the intent is that where you have the driveways, that's room for guest parking. And where you have alley loaded product, we try to be intentional about making sure there's parallel or clusters of guest parking near those spaces where, yeah, you might have to walk 100 feet or, or so to get to your neighbor's house. But I mean, it's a unique community. Um, and I think it'll be a joy to get out and walk in here because we have rich landscaping. We got park and open space, so I mean it. it it's a it's a I'm it's a about step the outside of living the, there having to walk. It, it, it's a choice. I think you know the, the type of folks that live here are not the type that want to buy their house, put up their fence, and live in their backyard. They're folks that like going to the clubhouse and meeting with their neighbors. They're folks that like putting their kids on their bike, not having to get out on a public street and go to a pocket park. Um, I mean, we've got a huge resort style pool. We got sport courts and playgrounds. Um, it, it's a different lifestyle, but it's for those that choose to live that way. Josh, is there a way on your rendering if you could block out your own street parking? It is really difficult to see it, the gray on the gray. And yeah. if you zoom way in, you can start to see it. Um, but I think if you would. It, kinda... It's easier to see on the engineering plan for sure. <laughs> yes, sir. And, and the engineering plan is. Um, at one scale, and then it gets cut in half on different, to, you know, to sure. be more manageable scales. But on the rendering plan, if there's a way to block off the on street parking, um, color coded so that it sticks out a bit more, and that way you can see the blocking associated with the ones that may have the variances for the garages, mm -hmm. and they can be associated. Well, we sure. have we can have that ready for next week. Um, parking with that. <clears throat> So the only true public street is going to be this, the, the spine road going through the middle, which, and then also the stub out road going to the left, which is to the west there. Everything else will end up being private. Is that correct? Yes. And, and while we're on that roadway, one thing that we would look at probably with the, with the final is uh, maintenance of that median and the landscaping and the right of way. Typically on a development like this, the development mm -hmm. will maintain that landscape. I think we would prefer to do that. Yeah, we would. 
<laughs> you mean the city doesn't do that? Oh, we'll, we'll do it. <laughs> this isn't this is private sewer, though. Uh, no, we'll have public easements. Okay. That'll come out on the plat. So the, the road that's being the public road and then any easements for any utilities. With so if there's a problem, because we've come up with this before, who cuts the asphalt if there's a problem because it's private? And, who, and the sewer department would cut the asphalt to fix it. If there was a problem, then y'all have to fix it. Right? Uh, it's private street. Is that how it works on private streets? In the that's city? what I'm going to let you know. Mr. Boshears know that? Uh, yes, we, we, we have talked about it, and I've told him that. So he knows yeah. he's going to have to fix it. But he it. does have a concern with that. You're right. That our, and public works will be in the same boat as if they were had to do something. But. <coughs> I understand. I just want to make sure it gets fixed. It, who fixes it back right? right? The, the HOA or... I think his concern was was trying to um, not having a standard for the repair on a public um, driveway such as this and then having to negotiate with an HOA as to what is a, a good repair and what's not a good right. repair. Yeah, I think that's. Uh, Josh, on your plan there on the on, on the townhomes on the Old Bear Creek, it has a call out. There's there's enhanced side elevations, but are, are those in the packet? I, I could, had a hard time finding those. No, that's going to be a note that we'll have to. Uh, we, we had a lot of work to do to get all the plans updated for the standard. So um, that's just us putting a commitment in there to you that we will provide enhanced finals because we, we didn't we didn't feel like that road was suited to having a lot of units fronting it. So we gave it a nice landscape buffer. We have 30 feet between the, the right of way and the units. But we didn't want to put a boring side of architecture because sides are usually less interesting than the fronts. Mm -hmm. um, so we showed a wraparound porch. And we showed some of the walkways okay. uh, wrapping. And it's, it's our intent to do that. Just to make sure I understand, all the single-family homes, including the ones with the alleyways, have what you're calling two-car garages, 22-foot wide garages, right? And uh, 22 foot deep garage. 22 yeah. foot deep. 20, mm -hmm. what are they, 25 feet wide? Uh, they're around 20 feet wide. 20 feet uh, wide. 21. Uh, I mean, they... And you're counting those in your garage counts as two car garages. Yes, sir. Okay. And that's part of the variance because, you know, they say it's got to be 15 per, per space. And, you know, a typical single family, Ryan home or whomever, you know, they build a, a 21 by 20 garage. And it varies from 19 to 21. I think 1910 might be our narrowest, but there's a lot of numbers on there. Paul, you could probably read better than me right 18, now. 1810. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah. See, I can't remember. 1810 to, to around 21. You were giving me two inches there. <clears throat> is Old Highway 99 a county road? We'd have to look and, and see. I don't know that I've. And we don't have any comments necessarily, I guess, from fire yet about the 16-foot alleys and all that stuff. Uh, they did review the plan, and that's where some of the comments came from with regards to the 24 on the driveways. Um, but I, that's true. This is a resubmittal. And, and for that, in, in that respect, this is, you know, in, in my opinion, a better plan than the original one that was submitted. It has more driveway access points and a, and a better plan. I, I know, are, we, are you in between? Fire chiefs right now, or no, sir. No, okay, not uh, chiefs, they, they, but like the, the gentleman that was fire marshal. Fire marshal. Uh, they, they did a they did a promote a new fire marshal. Okay, mm -hmm. it's been on our list to you know, go in and kind of walk them through how all the truck turn movements work, and but we we do have a lot of good radii and truck turn movements, and we've got the twenty four foot wide fire lanes where where they need to be. Will they have time to look at this new submittal before we? 
I can uh, show it to Brad. It, it's not too bad. He can look at it. <clears throat> you did mention that, you know, this is a walkability, walkable type community and bicycles and stuff. So keep in mind, in my mind, I'm thinking about bicycles going in garages and taking up spaces for vehicles, too. So, I mean, that's another concern, you know. So, you know, is the, the garage spaces being counted as, as spaces, you know, because when you, by the time you throw a bicycle and, I don't know, a, an attachment to it, it takes up a car space. So, easily takes. Any other questions, developer? On? Duck River Power. This is Duck River Power. I, don't, I would have to look at the technical comments. Yeah, it's Duck see. River. It is Duck River. Okay. It gets a little back and forth right in there. Mm -hmm. That doesn't surprise me. I don't think we've done this been Duck River Power. We have, yes, sir. Quell, 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 Quell Run is a Duck River. Okay. No, no comment. It says here from Duck River. Well, they got a letter. Oh. Use your calculator. There. They're getting acquainted with our standards for lighting and adjusting some of the requirements for the underground. What now? <laughs> well, you're taking a, basically a county utility and then right. applying some city standards to it. So the, I think the first one was a little bit of a shock as far as the quail run. So and just in the way that we do the lighting and the service lines underground, things in that. Okay. Well, we're all on the same page all now. Same page. Right. We're, right. Matter of fact, we just executed an agreement with them. We did um, last council meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. All right. So uh, now I'm looking at these letters. It brings up another question. The one from Columbia Water is dated May 13th and says it's good for 120 days. Is that a concern? Cause we're knocking on 120 days. This letter is valid for 120 days from date of issue. Yes, sir, because it was a deferral based upon the first round of comments is where the letter first came from. And um, due to the comments and the time it took to revise that, it did get pushed one meeting, and that's why you're seeing that. We can request, or Josh, you can request Mike to send you a new updated letter for that. We'll do that. Shouldn't be that. Any more questions? Thank you Thanks, very Josh. much. The next item is Greens Mill Steadfast PUD. Preliminary PUD Master Plan Rezoning from Emily Horner. <laughs> Can I get a drink? <laughs> <laughs> Old Highway 99 is Columbia. Water? Good. What is that? Old Highway 99 is Columbia. It is Columbia? Yeah. That is a Columbia Road? Okay. Yeah. Set up Columbia standards. On that parking lot, I doubt that. Year, <laughs> you know, there's not an HOA. There'd be a property manager on site. And I think for cars parked on the sidewalk right now. You tell them. Yeah. I mean, that's, as I mentioned, they have full time on site maintenance and uh, property management staff. Some folks live there as residents. And so, we, they have, you know, 24 so. hour hotline. So initially, it was probably going to be a requirement. Use your garage first. I mean, I would think it would yeah. strongly encourage. Mm -hmm. I mean, and there's there's a lot of ways to manage that type of stuff. Like residents got to have a sticker, and if they see residents parking in guest spaces, they can say park in your garage. And I mean, that's the nice thing about a property management manager versus an HOA. They actually have ways to in leases and things to enforce rules and regulations. <clears throat> Uh, I would you have a uh, hard time with me on this. I think we're talking about Greens Mill. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you may recall we uh, deferred this. Um, we've been working with staff diligently to come up with a plan that meets everybody's needs. Um, this is a mixed use project. Um, we click to the next slide just to give everybody some context. This is a very emerging and happening area of. Uh, Columbia. Uh, our site's right there in the middle. It's 12 acres. You've got Drum right to the south. On the east side of um, Nashville Highway, you've got Carter's Station on the west side. You've got Arden Village on the north. Um, so a lot happening. Uh, a lot happening specifically around the Greens Mill Road and Nashville Highway intersection. All of these developments, including the Greens Mill single-family PUD, which is down the road, a click, um, is uh, 
many of those have obligations to improve this intersection. And this project um, actually brings a lot of the land dedication that allows many of those traffic improvements to occur there at the intersection. Um, this is the new plan. The one we looked at before, the main difference was the driveway off Greens Mill Road was located as a cross intersection to just to the west with the drum right intersection that you can see on the bottom of the of the graphic. And um, as we were looking at the distances needed for turn lanes onto Nashville Highway, both kind of the, the left turn southbound movement, um, some of the northbound right turn movements, um, putting a four-way intersection there created problems. Uh, and it it was more important for us that the city has a safe and successful intersection. So we went back to the drawing board. You looked at a at kind of an interim sketch of this plan last month, and staff said, hey, you need to get us full engineering. So that's what we've been doing for the last uh, cycle here. We have moved the driveway to the east, but we've kept the same character. You know, originally, we are trying to treat this driveway kind of like a street, parallel parking, limited driveway access. Um, because we have commercial use in the front building. That front building is mixed use. That yellowish corner there that you can see, is that's been a component of the project since the first submittal. Um, there on the bottom, you can see that, that whole frontage there on the ground floor has storefront glass and doorways, the ability to kind of break up those spaces as the leasing occurs. We have Kind of the, the right hand side is the amenity and the leasing, and the left hand side, uh, the right you know third is is leasing and amenity. The the left two thirds is the commercial. Um, this was the elevation. It, it really has never changed. We've we've added a little bit of residential to the back L that kind of goes along the detention pond there. Um, so we have been to the architectural review committee and got this commercial area approved. That has not changed. We've just kind of added a little bit of residential because one other significant change is that we removed one of the buildings in the rear um, entirely. So where we have one, two, three, four, five buildings, we had six before. So in order to kind of offset some of the unit loss, um, we added a little bit of distance onto the back of the residential of the front building. Um, we still have... 227 units, a mix of one, two, and three bedrooms, um, commercial space, amenity space. Um, we have the buildings in the back are a three, four split. I'll show you that in a minute on a different slide. Um, our variance request is really around um, building heights in the setbacks in the, along the front. And actually, I just wanted to clarify, um, we, our front mixed use building is underlying MRC zoning with a PUD overlay. The MRC allows 40 feet, 45 feet, and the 20 foot, you know, at the 20 foot setback and up to 75 feet and the 40 foot setback. And our PUD, we've got just a slight variation to that 43 and a half feet at a 30 foot setback and 58 and a half feet at the peak of the roof at the, which would be a 70 foot setback um, from the property line. Uh, our parking requirements, 342, we have 368 spaces, uh, 341 surface spaces, 27 of which are garage, that's 7% of the total. Um, the next slide will show you our three, four split buildings on the left. So on the downhill side, you've got a four-story elevation. You can see the side elevations where they step up to the uphill side with a three-story elevation. And then on the right-hand side, you can see our mixed-use building. Uh, Nashville Highway is on the top of the screen. We've got our amenity space on the right in orange, those commercial pods, which are broken out in spaces now, but they could be further subdivided or, or drawn together depending on who, who leases what. And then we have a kind of a closed-off wing of residential uh, that kind of goes back to the site. And the next slide. Um, this is a view. It's a bird's eye. It's not uh, down below, but even at this level, you can see uh, the kind of the commercial space there on the right uh, with some kind of hardscape plazas there in front of those commercial uses. Um, we've got 
the amenity space that extends out as a single floor uh, on the north side of the building with the pool beyond, and you can start to see uh, the buildings in the rear as well. Um, just some comparisons with uh, surrounding developments right up the hill. We've got the Arden multifamily, which has very similar uh, conditions, uh, reduced setback. Uh, that that particular building, you know, it's kind of more set above the road. It looks like roughly eight or ten feet above the road. Um, and just making some comparisons about grades at the street, grades at finished floor, grades at the parapet heights. Uh, and then our building at the south, we have a slightly different condition where the road's actually higher on the north side, and it's a little bit below the site on the south side. So I think if we go back to the site plan, that's really where the discussion evolved at the last meeting where we, we've come back, we've addressed the entrance location uh, project so we can accommodate all of the traffic study requirements at Greens Mill Road and Nashville Highway. And I think we've still been able to maintain a nice through drive. I think one other point to mention is we did provide the um, access to adjoining properties there in the north east corner uh, that engineering had asked for. Um, so that's that's the update, and we're here to answer any additional questions that you may have. So on this one right here, they are asking, it's about a 12 acre site. They're asking for a rezoning of the property. The current zonings, the front portion is gonna be an RS40. And then also there's a GCS component um, on the back side of the property. This was applied for under the previous ordinance 3638 and the rezoning request is asked for is an MRC PUD as Josh indicated there earlier. Variances requested are, you know, what the variance. it's listed on the front there, and, and he went over those too. It's most of regards to the setback with regards to National Highway, yeah. um, the the height standard does come into play so on with the MRC, but there is an allowable height that they're staying under. Um, it's just the setback portion is what comes to play in this one. Um, as as he mentioned, some of the changes. Um, I believe you actually lost the building in the adjustment and right. so in, in in losing the building they did have the three four split to the greens mill road side um at that previous to middle i think was just a three story at that point um just a few comments that we had on the resubmittal was that the landscaping is not very clear on the new resubmittal as to what's being proposed so if there was any way that we could see what the thought was on that i think it talks about it in some places, but then in some places it really doesn't. Um, I think um, some of it just maybe been didn't get carried over from the original submittal on some of the call outs, maybe or a layer was turned off. Are you looking for, uh, I guess, an updated landscaping plan, oh, more of a black and white version, or yeah, you're, you're uh, well, the the one that's uh, the recent middle was had uh, several call outs just for setbacks, and there is. Symbology showing landscaping, but it doesn't really say. Okay, this is what we're putting here. Gotcha. Um, and then I think another spot it did allude to a twenty-five foot boundary buffer, but then again, it really didn't give a lot of detail of what that buffer was there. But. And I think our intent is, you know, because one of the variances is to just create a, a uniform buffer on all sides. Whereas if you were to apply the the buffer ver the buffer ordinance from the previous code, there's like. You know, one would be 30 and the other would be 20. So we said That's 25. Right. I remember that. Mm -hmm. And and so we, we would plant to whatever the city's ordinance is for the 25. Okay. But, you know, if it's three trees and 50 shrubs or whatever that was. But uh, just, to, just, to, just to clarify what, sure. what, what you're proposing there, what, is what we're kind of looking for. And mostly it's Greens Mill Road and Nashville Highway. I think I understand what you're trying to do with, between Grove Park and then also the budding county property. Uh, the 25 foot, I, I'm... I'm assuming you're following a 0.6 opacity with that based on the 25 number. Uh, but the street sections were the part that was a little bit unclear of exactly what was being proposed there. Uh, also, when you, uh, when you changed your layout a little bit, if there was a way on the parallel spaces on your north access road um, to have a break inside of that, there's X number of spaces going in a line there. You've done that on some of the other parallel. Or you in cap, but then that's also the longer add, section. Yes, sir. Just one right there in the middle, preferably right across from the exit portion of it, okay. right there. 
That makes sense. Um, so it's just a, a small thing there. Uh, also, if there was a way to or have a comment on regards to the maintenance building, that's an addition there as to what that's going to look like. Um, same architecture style as the garages that are being proposed, or it, it'll have a, just a have nice a little stone wainscot and you know uh, cementitious. It, it, it'll match architecture. The, the, the idea is that um, Steadfast has on-site leasing and maintenance as well, mm -hmm. and so they'll have a golf cart and a little single roll-up garage, and so they'll have a full-time on-site maintenance person that's you know taking care of the grounds, um, you know, fixing washers and dryers and things like that. It's just a but it'll be, it is an attractive building that matches. Considering where it's sitting at next yeah. to Greensboro Road, we just needed something that was just stating what it's understood. What it was there. I think that was kind of a, an add in, and I can see why you'd want to have it. I believe that was most of the new review comments, unless I missed something. Did I miss something? Uh, the <clears throat> internal drive needs to have a public utility, uh, an access easement through it that connects it to that eastern property. So just Oh, to, that's right. Uh, On the northern side. Yeah, the leg from Nashville Highway from Greens Mill and to the east, so that T there could That's be right. encompassed with a, an access easement. Also, the 150-foot max uh, length for the turnaround. We'll have to look at that on the, the southeast here, and I'll discuss that with the fire marshal. I mean, our intent there was to provide an uh, emergency vehicle access that, you know, would have a gate. Okay, is that what that dotted line is? It'll be something that I'll, can withstand the, the load of a vehicle yes it'll be blocked okay okay that was i did have that on there about the white dotted lines yeah. what were those okay at the end of the parking road right mm -hmm. there i think originally we had had that as a full driveway access and you'd ask for that to be removed yes. but we felt like you know it was a good place to have an emergency access in lieu yeah i agree with that and that was the only place that was the 150 i think that one be. I believe so. Is, are we still doing the variant? I mean, I've got so much stuff here. We still only had each built units. Six, there six. is a variance for the typically your your ordinance is for twenty four units, and they're okay. requesting twenty eight. I believe now in the new resubmittal that would be for all of the buildings. Uh, let's see what it. That's correct. Those five buildings in the rear. I guess you, you're. I'm not sure how we count the mixed use, you know, if that qualifies. Yeah, that's a good as... question. Yeah, because you've got the, well, you, there's, I think it's 87 units in that building. But that's a, if, you know, it's a corridor building with elevators and mm -hmm. fire stairs. And... No, the garages are an addition uh, since the original submittal. We are. Uh, our garages are only seven percent of um, required parking, so we should we shouldn't need variance for that. I don't think. Is that. Am I interpreting that correctly? Yes. <clears throat> Can we have up to 30% as garages? Yes. Because we have well under that. It's up to 30%, uh, but your garage units, you would need to look at the garage unit sizing. Some of these are got 13.6 on some of these. 15.5 and 13.6, so it looks like it's... You know, that, that's some cleanup on our part. These were all designed to meet, intended to meet. I, we, we can meet the city's minimum single car garage requirements with these buildings that's... Well, I noticed the line work was shifted on some. Some of them are in the middle of the wall. Some of them are on the outside wall, inside wall. So I don't. It, I think that could have been, and and that may be part of just some minor cleanup we need to do is make sure that mm -hmm. it's not you know 15 feet to the center of the walls. It's 15 feet inside. Inside. Yeah. So I think the same applies on yeah. We did uh, so we did discuss the commercial. Uh, Chairman goes bringing up comments from last meeting. Um, we did discuss the commercial portion of it and then go back and review that city planner today. Uh, the the commercial section itself did not change, and that's what the design review team in Ordinance 3638 would review. Your new ordinance would be a little different, but what this is under the standards is under for review and process. 
the design review team looks at the commercial section only, um, not the multifamily. What the changes between the original middle and this middle was, as Josh stated, they took the residential portion and expanded it on the one side. So they really didn't change the location or architectural of the commercial portion, just added another square there onto the building on the residential. And if I understand correctly, looking at your architectural, you're continuing the same frontage on the first floor on the Nashville Highway side that is the commercial portion. That's right. You're continuing that on the Greensmill Road side all the way across, even for the residential unit. That's, yeah, okay. as shown, correct. It's full masonry. The, the windows change a little bit just because you go from a storefront to a, a residential unit. Well, I think that may have been the intent, but in your renderings, it doesn't. It, it, I think maybe it kind of got copied over and it, it carried on those full, full height windows on through the residential portion, too. Well, I'm not the architect, and if they put that on there, that's what we're building. So, <laughs> well, I mean, because we, we have been very intentional about this redesign. So, as I, it, these these all look so similar that sometimes it's, it's hard. It is a little hard to see. We just zoomed in on it today and noticed that they were very similar to the National Highway side. But we figured the intent was to have the more traditional window for that portion of it, not the full seven foot tall window, commercial window. You know, those section. are pretty nice in a residential unit as well a lot of natural light but um if there's minor kind of bump ups in the lower you know sill heights that <clears throat> i could see it on the inside court view you yeah. can see the window changes from the commercial it goes into a, see kind of a water table below it and a smaller window in the court view so i figured that's what was supposed to be applied to those remaining residential units on greens mill got a lot of cleanup you gonna be able to get it by next week. We can get whatever staff needs. Okay. Gosh, what do you envision going in the commercial site? You know, uh, we, we're calling it office and retail. So you know, small professional office spaces. Uh, if it's you know a tax service, if it's uh, you know a lawyer, an architect, you know, I mean, it's, it's more suited. It's not necessarily suited for a lot of restaurant space. I mean, you could get a nice cream shop or a small sandwich shop, but it's, I would say, you know, uh, steadfast has talked about doing some co-working areas where you could uh, rent, you know, conference room and small office suites, that type of thing. So yeah. that's, I was just thinking, you know, just like you said, restaurant stuff <clears throat> with the access I mean, and all that, it just seemed to be more, more like an, you know, like you said, an office space where, doesn't require a lot of traffic coming in to, I guess, client. Mm -hmm. That is a calculated into the parking spaces, so it's shown as retail and office. They do have that incorporated into their overall parking. So the number of spaces space. required. Mm -hmm. okay. That's at five per thousand square feet. So not that it's kind of trivial, but in the architectural concept there, it's got this huge patio, and it shows this little circle of a pool. I'm assuming you're going to have a pretty large pool in that. Yeah, that's a, just a placeholder for now. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Next item, uh, Fieldstone Farm, Section 5, Phase 1. Applicants requesting that to be deferred. Yes, sir. They are working on the water availability letter. Okay. Item 622-0176, PUD Master Plan Revision, request from Chet Rhodes to revise a plan unit development master plan for 730 Mooresville Pike. Mr. Rhodes, here in a minute. Do you not see Mr. Rhodes? Um, I'll pull it up here real quick. This is an existing building up there at the corner of Mooresville Pike and James County Boulevard. It is more popular known as the bowling alley there with Arcade Center. They are requesting to, a, this is a very old HUD master plan, and they are asking to amend that to add in a out some outdoor recreation. So currently everything that's on the site is indoor recreation, um, laser tag and things of that nature. They are now looking to expand that into the open space in the front. Um, there's quite a bit of green space out there uh, with a miniature golf area as well as a go-kart track area. And that is what they're showing there on the plan. This is um, the one we need. 
Uh, yes, sir. That's it. Um, oh, okay. thank you. <laughs> yep, it's right there. And let's see, on this one right here, if we just had a, this was a resubmittal as well. We just had a couple of comments is that the landscaping needed to be reviewed. There's actually a gas line easement running right across the front that they have quite a bit of vegetation sitting in, and I don't believe the gas can allow them to dig inside the gas easement, um, as well as the amount of material being shown. There is a canopy structure that is going to be over the stacking area for the race cars there, go-karts. Uh, that is scheduled <coughs> to go before the architectural from review committee next week um, so we'll could see some changes from from that based on what i've seen on the submittal uh, also we just had a general question they had a fence shown in the first one and it's not on this one just verifying that it's not um, there weren't very many comments on this one they did expand the parking area some but at request of staff they did um, put in and currently there are no islands within the parking lot uh, so at the bare minimum, we requested that they put in directional islands on the ends and go ahead and landscape those. Does there have to be landscaping between James Campbell and the go-kart track? Yeah, so there is on their landscape plan, which is oh, oh, okay. maybe the there. last page here. Let's uh -huh. see. Generally, it is. It's the last page there. It's not much that's shown, which is one concern, but then the other part is, is that the gas line is sitting right there. So I think they're gonna to have to rethink how they're going to screen that um, in that area right there to the, to the east, to the northeast of the site. They have quite a bit of area um, to work with there, but right in front of the track itself, something needs to be adjusted right there to come off that easement a little bit. Yep. Yes, yeah, sir. Mm -hmm. If you zoom in right there, you'll see the dash line and the, the gas line on it there. You're zooming in? Mm hmm. And I won't. I don't know where we were. Yeah. Well, it's on the landscape, but it's on their initial. Oh, well, we need to see the um, results of the architectural review meeting before we. Yes, sir. At the voting session, we'll have a recommendation from the board, um, okay. if, and any changes would would be presented to you at that time. Just looking at the structure, I, I'm not a voting member, but I would assume there could be some changes mm -hmm. based on what I'm. Mm -hmm. That's the. But it looks. I mean, as long as they can get this landscape thing, it should be pretty good. It's it's a fairly simple plan. Yeah. Um, they did leave the the driveway originally. The driveway to the west there was removed. That's currently there, um, which is actually a priority. I mean, will be a preference, but at the same time, fire department is looking at this building. This is a non-conforming building as it is. This would get them closer to conformity, so they've requested to leave it in there, so that's why it's left on the plan. Because originally the access off of East James Campbell was going away. And it's ample parking for this for the additional space. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir, it's, and it's a very uh, seasonal mm -hmm. um, type of scenario that the winter time, the indoor is what is dominated, right. and then during the summertime, the indoor starts to slack off, and then the outdoor portion of the recreation would would kick in. I can remember when we had some of that stuff across the street not long ago. Yeah, that putt putt. And... Yes, sir. I remember that when I first moved here. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, it was seen better days when I first moved here. But <laughs> I think it had to. Yeah. Any other discussion? Go on to item seven. 22-0202 Rutherford Subdivision Preliminary Plat Request from McNeely Civil Engineering uh, for Preliminary Plat Approval of 124 lots off Rutherford Lane, Tax Map 112, Parcel 3.06. Hello. I just, I'm here to answer any questions. I'm Eric McNeely. Eric, this is a site that we've seen, I guess, in the past, I assume, with the Came in as RS6, then the back is RS10, and yeah, yes. so now we're just down to 
preliminary plat of it, I guess. Of the RS10, yes, sir. Yeah. I guess some of my initial questions, uh, maybe from you or, or, or you know, the gentleman there, but you know, there were several things, if I remember right, from, from some of the early planning commission sessions, was about some sidewalks and striping and things of that nature. All of that stuff still holds today, I assume, based on. Yes, it's incorporated into the okay. preliminary plat for the school system. Yeah, right. for the yeah, yes, sir. Okay. yeah. Yeah, for the schools and uh, the school system. And then the other question I had, there's a few properties, a few lots, and I'm going off a of memory here once we, you know, when we talked about this at Planning Commission, but there's a few lots that the backyards are going to back up to Rutherford Lane, maybe on that little cul-de-sac. And I didn't know what kind of landscape buffer or whatever, just from aesthetics, you're driving down Rutherford Lane, looking at the backyards, you know, of these few homes. So, Yeah, we're, uh, I believe the, uh, the, the original con the, when we took the concept plan through there, we had a uh, thirty foot landscape buffer on that property line, so we'll maintain that. Okay. And would it have a what's the word, Paul? A, a opacity or what's the word? An opacity. Opacity. Yes sir. yes, sir. They would end up laying that out on their site construction plans. Of what that's going to end up being, that'll be in your open space four right there. Yeah, we chatted about. Okay. And is that at what point, or can we even request a certain level of opacity? Is it just whatever those the requirements are going to be? It typically, it's the requirements that are there. Um, certainly, the applicant can, can provide more uh, on top of that. And if, if that's the case, I see you're saying they lots forty three through I guess thirty six there. Mm -hmm. Are the ones I guess are the main concern, and that would be the main concern. But at the same time, you know, I guess you don't want to have too much that would obstruct view from pulling out on the street. No, sir. We'll have a slight distance slight triangle distance. that that we would prohibit material to be put in that slight distance area there. Do you know roughly what your ideas are as far as how much buffer you're going to put in there? Yeah, Thirty foot was typically a, a passive one. Or, you know, we we went. Uh, we'll have to go back and look through the through the Columbia zoning reg. Typically, we have um, excess material that we will take and put in that area and do some berm, mm -hmm. and then put landscaping on top of those berms. So it's great that, privacy that for, the, okay. for the homes in the rear as, as the home that we're building. Okay, and so we'll put in what we call a tadpole type shape. And uh, structure them and make mm -hmm. sure that we have drainage between those areas. Leave most of the drainage flows back on the property in that particular area. So, um, all the material that we would pull out for sewer and water and some of that stuff, we would probably um, put it there and create the firm and escape the top. That would give you an additional visual uh, on the okay. one another. Those Thank lots you. are also padded out about 12 to 16 feet above the road. I'll be sitting pretty, pretty high up. Gotcha. And then what is the, this may be, Paul, these little, this just trees, or what is this kind of grade? That is the uh, buffer area that they are leaving on the back side of the lots there between that and Criddle Meadows okay. right there. Yes. That's a, we're going to, the rear of the Criddle Meadow lot. Family lot. Oh, okay. yeah. There's a very established tree line there with some really old trees through there right. that they're going to be staying off of and trying to save those. Okay. For for both developments. And does that just become kind of a green space or something? Okay. Any trees that you know are mature trees, we can keep in there. We want to mm -hmm. keep all the existing trees. Yeah. <clears throat> Pretty much lays out like what the original mm -hmm. RS10 that we saw. Thank you. Right, plus, plus one there. Glenn, did you say the ones in the culture sack are going to be 12 feet higher than Rutherford Lane? Right here. So the, yeah. so the berms will be 12 feet high right there? No, no, not the berms. No. no. I mean, the, no, it, not it gradually berm. follows the road grade, and okay. we've got a detention pond that we've got to route the drainage back there. Can't get, there's an area in the middle of the site that's uh, we, we do jurisdictional water. So, take the drainage. You're talking about the area between the back. 
So it, it set off the road, you know, a decent distance, but you're going to have your, your pad for your lot, a slope down, then a ditch, and a detention pond, and then a little berm. Okay. The road. Yeah, well. The grading, that grading. Okay. There's a ditch right there. Right. But we can come up with And you have a landscape? I mean, I, I can't. I don't see any landscape with, with, with a with a plat that come in at the site construction plan. Okay, on a plat. But then it's what we're doing the preliminary plan. Site construction plans for a, for a plat, we wouldn't see them to the site construction okay. plan. It, it would you wouldn't see it on your the plat is just a subdivision of the property. We had them highlight some of the open space for us, but landscape uh, plan. the actual details portion of it for the property comes in at site. Okay. Anything big in the technical comments? Anything concerning? Doesn't look like. No, sir. Okay. Got no other questions? Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. Close my agenda. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. <laughs> it's easy to do. Next item is item 8, 22-0206, the crossings, site development plan revision. Request from Joshua Henrick. For a revision to the crossing site development plan located off Catherine Court. Nobody here for that one. Nobody okay. here. For that one. Uh, so this this should look fairly familiar with you. Um, it's a, a fairly old project that um, within the last few years has been recently purchased and it's come back before you um, for some amendments. Um, and so this is a another amendment. Uh, the original plan and this is, and this is regards to the boundary buffer portion of the site. Uh, the original plan showed um, a good bit of landscaping as well as a wooden fence to be incorporated within that buffer. Uh, then they came back here fairly recent and requested that to be a vinyl fence instead of a wood fence. And now they um, have reapplied requesting that the plan be amended to remove the fence on the east side, the right of the plan, and on the north side, there toward the top of the plan. <clears throat> Remove the the the, the vinyl the, fence. The fence. Mm -hmm. uh, the only during the staff review, the only thing that we saw was that there there was a portion on the right side uh, that is more of a wetland area that would be more difficult, and you can see it in your. Your contours there. If anybody's familiar with that corner, Dr. Fan's office is on the corner. Well, this is right behind his office, and you've seen how it drops off. Uh, that area is something that would be of a challenge. Um, after that, where the church property is in the northeast corner, um, that is relatively flat. And then also the northern portion, we had advised the, the new owners at the time of construction to not disturb that area because they can count that as their vegetation but they did clear it out since then so there is some reservation about removing it from an area that was vegetated and now it's now moving the buffer as well on the so what are they proposing just to put a bunch of heavy trees and stuff leaving the landscape trees just removing the fence itself well i know that on the west side the property owner there would be here to question you know something nothing's changing on that side nothing's changing on that side and the the only thing that that staff was looking at if you if you drive down um, westbrook drive between now and uh, your voting session you can see the the scenario playing out on westbrook drive they have the vinyl fence and they have the vegetation in but the vegetation now is actually the lower limbs are at the same height as the top of the fence there now so there's nothing underneath it the trees have now exceeded that fence, so there's not much of a buffer there without the fence. Mm -hmm. And the buffer, the buffer and the fencing in particular, I remember this particular project um, was applied to this as a part of the as a part of the PUD because of the owners in that area requesting the the buffer itself. 
they just don't want to install it cost maybe mainly they have not stated so the reason why not to I, well i believe they have stated that they didn't see the purpose of it um during technical and as i stated staff can see how on that southeastern corner right there with the with the terrain um and it's currently very heavy vegetated in that area that it you can you can see the request why it be validated for that portion between building six and 24 that stretch right there. yep exactly there's a stream coming right through there yeah wetland area. yeah sounds like staff folks still sees a, a, net, a need for it north of building 24 and then all along rock springs road I, I i could i see a hard argument in saying why it should be removed especially on the the northeast where you have the vacant property and um yeah if you're looking at this screen back toward the left there where you can see the church in the background mm -hmm. um that area is could could have the fence and then that's good that will probably that property is going to keep changing over the years Streetview actually has a good representation of Burtis Hill. Oh. That's, that's kind of what we're talking about, how the trees have started to grow up. That they're getting, there's not much you can see through the trees. Yeah, uh, without, now, the, because without the fence the there, scale. it wouldn't do any. That's right. Yes, yeah. sir. Of what it was. That's right. Yeah, everything was pretty small before the fence went up. <laughs> so that's all we're requesting here is just a Yes, sir. It's just the fence. amendment for the fence portion. Yes, sir. And that's it. Yes, sir. That is it. I would uh, like to point out that Kevin and Austin put a great bit of uh, detail into your staff report in regards to some of these recent middles. So I would encourage you to look at some of the revisions. Some of those will be two different looking staff reports, one for the revision and then one for the original. If you really want to see the breakout of the units and what each unit looking like, please, please pay attention to those details. That'll help you when you're reviewing it. Especially on these mixed use ones, there's quite a bit of product types and different scenarios at play. Thank you, Kevin and Austin. Thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all for being here. <laughs> I mean, we don't, no other business to discuss no. today's session. So I guess All right. we'll adjourn. We'll see you guys next week. Uh, they won't appoint him until Thursday, but it'll be in October. Yeah,